Okay. So um, our next project is going to be self-portraits, but we're going to start out practicing just drawing our hands. And last year when we talked about um, drawing well, we talked about there's two things that artists need to be able to do well to be good artists. And last year we talked about seeing or perceiving as one of those things. So um, I drew a cylinder on the board, and we said, yeah, that's a great cylinder. But then I looked at the actual coffee can that was up there, and we looked at the contour that it has, and we looked a little bit more closely at the details, and I drew another one, and it was a better drawn picture, right? So the first thing that artists have to be able to do well is to be able to see what they are drawing. The second thing is breaking down a picture into piece by piece. So when I said that we're doing self-portraits, how many people were like, to draw ourselves and people are hard to draw right yeah a lot of us but if I had said hey we're gonna draw some lines I want you to draw this line and this line and this line you think you guys probably could have done that yeah it's not as intimidating if it's only just one little line we can handle that so when we draw a big picture if we can break that down into just one little line at a time, it's not so overwhelming and we can do a much better job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just draw my hand, but I'm going to do my best to sort of walk you through what I'm thinking as I do this. And when you draw your hands, you're welcome to, you know, kind of do like a peace sign if you want or whatever, as long as no turkeys. Okay, we're in middle school. We don't need to do turkeys. Your palm should be facing you because that's where you have more interesting lines. Um, and I also have a sign language alphabet on Canvas that you can look up if you wanted to do your initials or something like that. But otherwise, it doesn't really matter what you're drawing. We're just practicing, and the point is that we get better as we continue to practice. So as I draw this, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at just this section of my hand. There we go. So just the wrist to this first knuckle of my thumb. I'm going to think about, okay, is this line a straight line? What sort of angle is it at? And about how long is it? Okay, that's it. Now I'm going to move from the next section of my hand. So now I'm looking at just this line from here to here. As I look at that line, I want to compare it to the line I already have. So how does the angle change? Is it longer or shorter? Is it still straight or curvy? Those sorts of things. Okay, and then I have a couple of wrinkles on my knuckle. Now I'm gonna move on and we're gonna go from the, my knuckle to the edge of my nail my thumb are, I have these crazy hitchhiker thumbs. And so when I get to my nail, okay, this line is much shorter than the other ones. So I don't want to make it as long. Um, my nail comes up at a, at a pretty sharp angle. Like I said, because of that whole hitchhiker thumb thing I got going on. Okay, and now I'm looking at where does my thumb meet with my nail. Okay, for about where it, it starts turning. It was a little bit sharper than it needed to be, but that's okay. Okay, now I'm going to look at just the outside of my finger, of this first knuckle. So where does it compare to my thumb? How wide is it? And that whole little angle bit. So it kind of comes out first is farther out than my thumb. Okay, now I'm gonna go back up here. Look at this angle to my next knuckle. And now I'm kind of looking at the spacing of my thumb as well as this distance and this angle for my finger. Okay, my knuckle on my forefinger is a little bit shorter than where it gets here. 
but when I get to my finger, I know I need it to be just a little bit longer than that. Okay, now I need a fingernail. A lot of practice. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and come back up here to where this this knuckle is where these kind of meet because this is going to be a little bit harder to draw. It'll be easier to do once I already have them. So again, I'm looking, okay, this knuckle comes out farther than this one, so I want to be sure to do that in my drawing, but they're about the same width and about the same angle. My fingers could be a little bit skinnier, but otherwise we're doing pretty good. My knuckle from knuckle should be about here. This guy really kind of pushes, my third finger kind of pushes in on my second finger, so I'm going to wait to draw that side until I do my other hand, or my other finger. This finger ends about the same place as my first fingernail ends. So I'm kind of comparing again those lines that I already have. And I can't see all of this, maybe just barely, because my other finger comes into play. So going back up here, looking at these knuckles. Now if I look at this space right here, these knuckles are about even, this first one, the second one. So in my picture, I want to try and make those about even too. Okay, the other thing you might notice, as I'm drawing, I get really quiet. Okay, that's because it's really hard for your brain to do both of those things at the same time. So, I will know that you are working very hard on this if it gets really quiet. Because in an art room, that's typically what happens. Once your concentration is set, you physically have to close your mouth because they just it uses the same part of your brain and they just don't work well at the same time. Okay, now I just have my pinky. This knuckle is the furthest in kind of in between my finger and my thumb. It really kind of pushes on that other finger. It's my skinniest finger. You can kind of see the back edge. I don't know if you can see it where you're at. I'm at a little bit different angle than you. Um, this sort of makes this finger look distorted, the way that these two kind of push on each other, but we're going to go with it because that's what I see. My finger comes out underneath. My wrinkles. And then I can finish off my hand. I'm not too concerned about all the lines on the inside. Really what I want you guys to work at is um, the proportions of your hand more than necessarily the details of every single wrinkle. It helps to have some of those lines in because it helps kind of set where things are at, but you don't have to get overly crazy to get them all in there. If you would like to put some of them in though, that would be great. Okay, like this one here I have on my thumb is a pretty big one. Pretty big crease, it gets really dark down in here. You even put some shadows. You're gonna be using your pencil, so if you want to do a little bit of shading, you're welcome to do that as well. But like I said, I'm really looking at, you're practicing your proportions as you are drawing your hands.